Many people like Venom Fang X love to tout Genesis 1-1, but the ironic thing is science has utterly disproved Genesis 1-1 and shown it to be false. How has science done so? Well, looking at Genesis 1-1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. One of the reasons Genesis 1-1 is so taught by Christians is that it apparently shows the Bible knew the universe had an absolute beginning before science knew it. The gigantic problem is there is no scientific evidence that the universe had a beginning such that it needed to be created by a transcendent God. In other words, an absolute beginning. Many Christians think the Big Bang Theory shows the universe had a beginning, but scientifically that is false since the Big Bang Theory cannot extend prior to Planck time since the geometric theory of gravitation is based on general relativity breaks down. A few educated theists know this and so have turned to the BVG theorem to show the universe had a beginning, but the BVG theorem does not show the universe had a beginning. It only shows that inflationary models require physics other than inflation to describe the past boundary. And on the Ross conjecture, the universe is actually eternal, since on the Ross conjecture, the universe is a thought in God's mind, and on the Ross conjecture, God's thoughts are eternal. On the Ross conjecture, God chooses everything all at once, and since God is conceived as eternal, his choices are also past eternal at once. Ross labels this bizarre and reality contradicting notion as eternally chosen. So Genesis 1-1 has been refuted in the manner that many Christians use it to imply that the universe is not eternal and had a beginning, such that God created it. Because there is no scientific evidence that proves the universe is not eternal and no scientific evidence that it had an absolute beginning, which would necessitate its creation by a transcendent being. But ironically and rather pathetically, Genesis 1-1 doesn't even talk about the universe. Many Christians apparently think when Genesis 1-1 says heaven, it's referring to the universe. But this is not the case. Heaven is by definition the abode of God, the angels, and the good after death. The abode of God, the angels, and the good after death is not the universe. Christians will protest and say that heaven can also be a name for the sky. But of course, the sky is also not the universe. The sky is simply the region of the atmosphere and outer space seen from the earth. This says nothing about the rest of the universe as a whole, nor does it entail the rest of the universe that doesn't include what is simply seen from the earth. So Christians tout a passage that's supposedly supposed to show God created the universe and the earth when at best it's only saying God created the earth, the sky, and the outer space and things in that vault that is seen from earth. The two main ways that science has disproved Genesis 1-1 is that Genesis 1-1 says that God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. If we take heavens to be the universe, this is scientifically false since science has proven that the earth was not created at the same time as the universe, nor was the earth created anywhere near Planck time. If we take heaven to simply mean the region of the atmosphere and outer space seen from the earth, then science has again refuted the Bible, since science has shown that the sky, atmosphere, and the moon and stars were not created by God, but by natural processes. And the biggest way that science has refuted Genesis 1-1 is that Genesis 1-1 claims God created the earth. But this is false, as science has shown that the earth was not created by God, but rather that earth was created from the solar nebula through a process called accretion.